Woohoo! And we are online again with the Change of Visions of Change podcast. And I have an international friend today, tonight, um, speaking with us, Sterling. Hello. I'm so glad that you shining and um i was just finishing when i was on holidays in the alps um your book the art of manifestation and uh, we've been friends since i don't know 20 years now or something <laughs> a long time and i was really so happy when you brought the book out because you're speaking out of my soul you have a system for manifestation that you created over the year as a coach, as a person, you're coming uh, from your background as an artist, as an actor, as a musician, and now as an author and a uh, life coach with your art of manifestation system. I was most important, um, I mean, fascinated by this um, fact of being, then doing, then having. So instead of having a goal and when I reach that goal then I'm happy and this happiness is always kind of in the future you really bring it down to the here and now which I'm always talking about in yoga and meditation and the in the change vision and you say that being and the good feel ha having good feelings is the most important part in transformation I mean there are some parts you will explain it all to us but this is really something that interests me. Um, yeah. What is it up with this being and then doing and having? Yeah, that's such a good question because everybody seems to have bought into or have been taught the false illusion that you must have something before you can be happy and satisfied and fulfilled in life. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody's goal comes down to really the same thing, which is to have success and happiness in life. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants the same thing. And that success is gonna look different for different people. And, but what is the common thread between success for everybody is to feel like that they're fulfilling on a purpose, they're making a difference, that their, you know, their presence and their, uh, you know, actions in the world are making a difference for others, including themselves, of course. Look, the satisfaction is not going to really come in unless you are feeling like you are making a difference and other people are acknowledging you for that because you can do things all day long, but if it's not making a difference, then it doesn't really matter. And that satisfaction really comes from making a difference in other people's lives. So you've got that success and you've got happiness, right? And um, a lot of people have bought into, like I said, the misconception that once I have a divine relationship, I'll finally feel whole and complete with myself. I'll feel, you know, love or I, I will feel satisfied in my life. Um, or once I have, you know, a job where I'm making lots of money, I'll feel secure and then I will really enjoy my life. Or, you know, once I have a sports car for some people, that seems like the be all end all, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So I will say this, when you do attain a goal, this is where it gets tricky again, because people will attain or a goal, they'll achieve a goal and they will feel good momentarily. And then that thrill wears off and then they're having to chase something else again, to feel that thrill. It's almost like an addict trying to chase a high or something. So it's a false illusion that satisfaction or that sense of achievement, there's nothing wrong with achieving things in life, of course. But if it's in an effort to have peace and satisfaction in your life, that's where the problem is because it is a short-lived thrill. It is a short-lived satisfaction. 
And the reason why it even seems like the solution because of that thrill of attaining that goal is because you told yourself that. But it's not gonna last very long because it's not authentic. The motivation behind it is inauthentic. Saying that I'm going to feel worthy of love once somebody loves me is just false. You've got, you get into a relationship and you start to feel like you've come alive and everything's great in your world and you feel whole and complete with yourself and you feel you're just totally euphoric and that's wonderful. That's what's called the honeymoon period. But then after that period wears off, again, it's that kind of that false illusion that, that momentary high that people achieve. Once that wears off, suddenly the old problems are going to come back because they were never solved in the first place. And that is why they always come back. Then it's like, well, what else am I going to achieve? Or what else am I going to fix that's broken in my life? What else can I do to make myself happy again? And this goes on and on and on where one never really attains true happiness. But if you're being already you have, as a creator, you always have a choice and you're always creating whether you like it or not. You can't opt out of it. You can't not create. You're constantly doing it on a moment to moment basis. But the difference is whether you're consciously creating, you're consciously creating your life or you're unconsciously creating it. Like most people are unconsciously creating. The problem with that is that you're not going to get what it is that you want. That's how you get really what you don't want. So you better be satisfied with who you are first and then go out and do, go out and socialize. That's doing, go out and socialize so that you can attain the goal of meeting new people and maybe a divine relationship and that's having. So it's be, do, have, you're being satisfied and uh, appreciative and confident of your of yourself great okay now go out and do socialize and you're going to attain your goal of meeting those like-minded people that's what's extraordinary too so you're not going to be attracting people who are also lacking you know self-love or confidence within themselves or happiness within themselves you're not going to attract those because you're being, if you're being that yourself, and then you go out, you're going to be attracting the people that reflect the qualities of who you are being. And that's another reason why it's very important to be responsible for who you're being in life. And it's completely up to you to be anything that is genuine and authentic. And it will work every single time. You will always get what it is that you want. You'll always achieve the goals that you want to achieve because that those ways of being are love-based and if you're going out to try to fix something that you think is wrong about you and your life that's inauthentic and it's fear-based mm -hmm. so you're just going to get more things that are fear-based by moving forward in your life coming from that which is fear-based which you know so the truth is you're perfect the way that you are even though you're always evolving, you're always growing, you're perfect just the way you are. I like to use this analogy a lot so people can really kind of understand what I'm talking about. So I use the analogy of a small, let's say a tangerine or an orange tree. And it's got one little tangerine on it, one little orange on it. And then you have another tree that's full of abundance. It's got millions of tangerines, lots of oranges, whatever, on the tree. Would you look at those two and say one is bad or wrong? No, you would say, oh, this is a little tree. It's got one orange on it. You know, it's growing, it's evolving. It's no better. You wouldn't compare it. You would just understand the difference between the two, but you wouldn't judge or criticize it. Why don't we have the same kind of uh, respect and compassion for ourselves as we would when it comes to looking at those two uh, trees, you know, 
So I think it's very important to really give up wrong or bad in our lives and start mm -hmm. to look at things as maybe preferences, but not because it's wrong or bad. When you start to view life and you give up wrong or bad, then you can make the distinctions that they're just different. They're not wrong or bad, which can be a game changer. If you just took that on in your life, just that one simple practice, your life will change dramatically. Outside and within will change dramatically. So approach life like you would a fruit bowl, mm. a bowl full of fruit. You look at it, you survey it, you observe it. And you have preferences. Oh, I prefer bananas over mm -hmm. mangoes, right? But you wouldn't like make the mango bad and wrong. You went, oh, we shouldn't even have mangoes in the world. What are they doing here? They're so <laughs> stupid. They're so bad. They're so wrong. You would never do that. You would just accept it and allow it to be and move on with your preference. Yes. And when I now talked and interviewed to the people, I really realized that a lot of the problems is why we're over consuming, over eating, over whatever, um, over acting <laughs> instead of being is because we have a kind of a lack missing something in us and we want to fill it and fill it and fill it. So the, the positive experience I made is with meditation. And you, you also said one of your rituals is the meditation to go um really can fill you up from the inside out it's also what i work with my clients when we do the meditations i see the light shine brighter they fill up from the inside they don't need all this stuff in the outside they start being being happy whatever healthy what they need before they do an act and which is nice too to create in the world and to, to then have something but the being the being of happiness or whatever is the 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 the, the, the start the the, the same and um in your um process of the art of manifestation what would you say what part is meditation what what role does it play to yeah get more into this being like let's say it's really hard when you're in a not so good mood or having problems now, let's say during COVID or something to really get in that state of being happy, like out of no reason, just because you're alive. I mean, what greater gift, but if you just can see it at the moment, so how can uh, meditation help and what else can help? Meditation is great because it actually roots you, it grounds you profoundly to reality. So if you've had an experience with meditation that really allows you to disconnect from the reactionary mind and you're actually being profoundly present in the moment, <clears throat> you'll be able to see that everything is okay that everything always has been okay and always will be okay. And you'll also see that life is flowing mm. at a very manageable and very peaceful slow speed and not the speed that one can relate to, which is very fast paced and very overwhelming when the mind is not quieted. So there's, a lot of benefits to manifesting. And if you can be in the moment and you can be completely peaceful in the moment without having the anxious thoughts about the future and the depressing thoughts about the past, you're going to be in a place where there's clarity. Once you have clarity, then you'll be able to really envision what you truly want for the future without taking into consideration any kind of perceived constraints or limitations that you previously thought were gonna hold you back. So you'll be able to really, really, you know, invent that future, 
And also you'll be able to connect to your intuitive side, your higher wisdom. Because all that static is not there, what you need to know will show up right on time. I can't tell you how many times where, you know, I knew exactly five or 10 minutes, whatever it was, I would remember, you know, an appointment. I could be completely present and engaged in whatever it is that I'm doing without the chatter going on in the mind. And it's amazing how I'm like suddenly, you know, seven minutes, all of a sudden before an appointment, I get reminded. It downloads. Oh, you have seven minutes for this appointment. Perfect. And it's the perfect amount of time for me to transition, be prepared, be ready for that appointment. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the higher wisdom, the intuition, you're connected to that. So you know what you need to know when you need to know it. I laugh because people think if they, if they don't constantly have their brains going all the time, if they're not constantly remembering things and thinking about stuff all the time, they think that they're going to lose control of their life or they're, they're going to miss out on something or their life is going to fall apart. So they have this false belief that they have to constantly run that machine up here in order to, you know, keep their lives managed, but it's simply the opposite. So the thing is, when you examine all the things that you believe, you may want to consider that the truth is the opposite, <laughs> even though that might be hard to see. But that's what I've come to understand and have proven is that all the information that we've been given to us from society and teachers, our upbringing and schools and media, et cetera, is all opposite backwards information. Yes, it's crazy. And especially in these times of social media and fake news and uh, me as a mother being really concerned how we're going to handle that with our kids one day. Um, tell us about your Art of Manifestation system and the book. I know it's starting with the release letters. Tell us more about all that. Yes, the, um, the AOM book is also not just chock full of all the information you'll ever need to know about manifesting in life and how we invent and create things and how mm -hmm. our lives look the way they do, but it's also a workbook. So it's something that you can work. It's an airtight, foolproof, step-by-step -step program system divided into four parts that is designed, has everything that you need, nothing you don't need. Mm -hmm. So if you simply follow the instructions in the book, everything will fall into place. You don't even have to understand how it works in order to benefit fully from it and get maximum benefits from it. However, if you do wanna understand it, you have that opportunity too. It's like electricity, you don't have to understand how it works in order to benefit from it. But if you wanted to understand how it works, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. So there's four parts in the AOM system. And the first part is really about completing, clearing out the past relationships that are disempowering, the blocks, the false beliefs that are running our lives. So that first part allows you to clear out the baggage and the debris You know, some people out there that may be listening to this interview might even be thinking what I thought. Why can't I just be the real me who must have been, the real me must have been who I was when I was five because that is, you know, my younger self that had not been, that had been untouched that I came into the world with. I was very happy as a child and things like that. So, you know, that's what really started my inquiry into creating a system like this, because I thought if I could be that person that I really am without the baggage of the past, without all the disappointments and things like that, that we carry around with ourselves and be free of all that and be that person I was when I was five, but have the knowledge and the freedom of an adult, wow, what would life look like then? Right? What would life look like then? Because you're just full of possibilities and inspiration at that at that time, you know. 
So that's what really got me into answering that question. How can I bring that about? And, and so I started working on it and I experimented with it like a scientist for about five years before I took a blind. And I was hugely successful, but I didn't stop there. I wanted a blind test group of 15 people to try it for a year. Cause I was very curious. Okay, if it works for me, it's gonna work for anybody else, okay. And hugely successful, amazingly successful. I was blown away. It was, it was incredible. So then, you know, eventually then I started uh, offering it to friends and that were having a tough time. Nobody really knew about this system. I used it to create my extraordinary life. And I shared it with friends that I really felt I wanted to try and help. Mm -hmm. And then word got around and then I started working with the public. And so that's how it all started. But the four part parts, again, part one is removing all those blocks. Once you've done that, and now you're more like that euphoric, happy child you once were, um, then you're in a place where you can actually invent your future because you do not have false beliefs, hindering beliefs, holding you back any longer. You're in a clear space. You've got a blank canvas in order to create your life on. So now you can do it and you can really aim for the stars and feel, believe that you can achieve them. Because that's part of the problem too. A lot of people have a lot of grand ideas. They just don't believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. But that gets taken care of. That gets removed from that part one. So part two, you're inventing this awesome, ideal, perfect reality for yourself. And part three and four, that's part two, part three and four is all about how to bring it into fruition on a daily basis. This is so powerful, this work. It's so fast acting. If you are very impatient, you're in a great place because you get results right away. And that proof, that evidence will change your life forever. So on that three and four, there you are, you're creating the perfect day in the morning. This keeps you on track for the future you've created, the 12 month future that you've created for yourself. And it keeps you on track. And you're reviewing your day at the end of the day. And you're not only understanding how everything came into fruition and how you know this perfect day got created and experienced, but it allows you to stay on track so you don't derail yourself from achieving all of the things that you want to achieve in all areas of your life within that 12 month period. What's interesting is that a lot of people will achieve their 12 months and six months in mm -hmm. record time. And that's amazing as well. So this, you know, you review it at the end of the day, you understand how it's happening. You understand manifesting more and more on a daily basis. And you review that day and you're like, oh my goodness, I have 90%, 95%, 100% of everything I wanted to happen today actually happened. And I know how. Perfect. Now you can continue to repeat it. And now you're getting what you want, not what you don't want because you know exactly how to do it. And that keeps you on track. And you've got your 12 months, you know, coming to fruition. When I say there's 12 months, we got to keep in mind, we have certain areas of our lives we want to invent. We have, we have our home, we have our health, we have our relationships, career, finances. We've got travel and adventures. We have hobbies. You know, did I say relationships? Yeah. So, you know, we have all these areas of our lives that make up our lives. And it, what a concept to have all those areas working perfectly, exactly like you wanted it to, like you had a magic wand, like you had a genie in a bottle mm -hmm. and you've got all that happening in all areas of your life. I mean, what would you say about life then? How would you feel about life then? How would life be different for you? You know, so... And I'm going to tell you this too, 
this system works for everyone. I've worked with countless individuals and all of my clients have all gotten the same dramatic results. The results are gonna be a little different because people's lives are different and they want different things. But the level, the dramatic results that people have experienced have been consistent with all my clients. So for any of you that might think, cause I do get this question a lot. Well, it might work for others but it probably wouldn't work for me. <laughs> this is simply not true. So I'm just speaking to any of you people that have those concerns, you can forget about it because it works for everybody every time. If you're a human being, and the second thing, if you're really ready for positive changes, mm -hmm. those are the only two prerequisites for succeeding with this system. Yeah, I think so too, that people have a lot of excuses to not feel good. <laughs> yeah. Because there is well, ways fear. To feel. Yeah, fear, fear of change. Why is that well, so strong? What do you think? Why is that strong in people? Because people don't like being disappointed. You know, they don't want to be upset and they're afraid that if they fail, they're going to be disappointed. They're going to be upset. But this is not a concern that anybody needs to have when approaching the AOM system or utilizing the AOM system because it's just going to be unfounded. You know, so sometimes it's also that people are afraid of walking into something different that's the unknown and they'd rather attach themselves to what's familiar because then they know what they can expect, even if what they expect is not what they want. But again, it's about change. It is, is all about walking into the unknown. However, what if you redefine your relationship to change by thinking, wow, I'm going to have changes in my life, but I know exactly what they're going to be, those changes. Yeah, because we you create know? them. <laughs> right, I know. So I don't have to fear the unknown because it's not the unknown mm -hmm. because I know exactly what's going to be happening because I'm using a system that's going to get me there, that's going to take all the guesswork out, that's going to make it easy, that's going to be like a straight shot. All I have to do is follow these steps. Everything falls into place. That's it. The only thing I need to concern myself with is just doing, you know, those steps and it's fun. And since it's so quickly rewarding, it's encouraging and inspiring to continue. How do you see it on a collective base manifesting what's happening in the world right now? Um, us as a society, what can we manifest? How can we do this in a greater picture to really kind of, when we look at the planet and how fucked up, a lot of things are what can we do there to manifest the good and to 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 save and, and heal in in the world because there's a lot of healing necessary right now i mean i always say start with you and then work through your relationships to the greater picture and the environment so how do you see yeah. that especially also you i mean we know each other from back in Los Angeles 20 years ago we were young kids who were free and having our fun and whatever and uh, really I mean the, the America's divided uh, in Europe it starts COVID was a tough year for a lot of people um, how can we stay positive how can we manifest the positive things to the world that we need also in order for our kids you know to have like a nice life and planet in the future ahead yeah, it's a really good question because right now the way the majority of people are kind of operating is that they get, they're very fear driven, number one. And then the feed the fear by thinking they're doing themselves a favor by connecting to media. They think, well, I'm, if I'm informed, then I'm going to be safer and I'm going to be more prepared absolutely not it is a another false illusion and it's a lie because it's going to perpetuate the fear it's going to cause more confusion and it's not going to give you the clarity that you really need to know in order to thrive survive thrive and to uh, be secure if you will feel secure know that you're okay and everything's going to be okay. That's what everybody wants. 
but the way they're going about it by plugging into media is the absolute opposite worst way and the best way to fail actually so you know that that information out there is sensationalism and it's the agenda the agenda behind media is to get your attention mm -hmm. to get your attention by any means did you know that they know by playing into your fear, they're gonna get your attention. They are competitive, it's cutthroat. There's only so many eyes out there that they can you know, um, compel. So they'll do whatever it takes to get your attention. And what's interesting is that there was a news source that would report all the positive things that were going on in the world. And it was a great news source. It was really informative. Oh, there was a breakthrough in Alzheimer's. We found out that in order to prevent, this is useful information. This good news is useful, but it failed because it didn't have enough people uh, to support it, enough interested people because people don't resonate with that because they're too fear driven. When you're fear driven, you're going to be attracted to the things that are going to continuously feed the fear. Mm -hmm. So this is a cycle we've got to break. Now I understand why people do that. Like I said, I want to be informed. I want to feel secure. I want to be prepared if need be. You do not, this is not the way to go about it. But the way to go about it is if you are transforming your inner world, not only are you going to have a transformed outer world, we all have our personal world, okay? Our little personal world. So not only is your personal world going to transform and you're gonna be attracting all the things that you want to attract, so you're, that's your security, that's your safety. But you're also gonna have, you're gonna be connected to your higher wisdom, your intuition that's gonna inform and guide you. That's where your information is gonna come from. And that's truthful and that's what works. So if you're just responsible for transforming your own inner world, it's amazing how powerful that is and how that energy actually has a rippling effect. I can't tell you how many people clients that I've had who've had transformed relationships with their friends and their family. And those people had no idea they were doing the AOM system and they never talked about it and they never had to even say anything. They just would report back to me and say, this is crazy, but my husband is like communicating better with me and he's supporting and he's doing these things things that I went and wanted him to do before, but he never would. And I'm not even asking him, he's just doing them. Or all this peace and harmony and cooperation that's going on in the family. I can't believe this. Oh my gosh, my mother is no longer depressed. How did that happen? I didn't do anything. You did, you did so much more than you realized. You transformed yourself and that's all you need to do. And it has that kind of rippling effect. So if everybody started doing that, that will transform the world. And it can't be any other, you won't get any other result but transformation, empowerment, uh, healing. That's all, you know, and the list goes on of all the wonderful things that we want. So that's all you have to do. And even if, don't be concerned if everybody else isn't even doing it, just do it yourself. The more you do it, more each individual does it, the more it will start to permeate the collective consciousness and it'll take care of itself. Just like the examples that I was saying about my clients and their troubled relationships. And it, it took care of itself because they were just working on themselves. So if you do that, if everybody, you know, just take care of themselves and not stop worrying about everything else going on in the world. Stop worrying about it. You can't do anything about it, but you can if you just transform and work with yourself. Protect your space is very important. 
be very discerning about what comes into your space, what people say, what you watch on TV, what you watch, you know, protect it, keep all negativity out and instead replace it with the things that are in alignment that do support what everything we're talking about here. There's a lot of great information. I love Wayne Dyer. Go listen to his, you know, listen to his talks. You know, he's one of the people I love the most. Go listen to what he has to say, you know, uh, go watch on YouTube one of his lectures mm -hmm. there. You know, you can replace it with this kind of media. Read the books, mm -hmm. you know, read those books. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do to replace what you're, you know, taking in. Be, be mindful of a, about it. I was... Mm -hmm. I was watching, I don't even remember what it was, but it was something, uh, it was, I, I, maybe it was a documentary, but the point is, I thought it was gonna be about something else. And, um, but it ended up being like, really kind of depressing and this and that. And I, I didn't even finish it. I said, oh, this is not what I thought it was, okay. And I turned it off and I thought, God, look how affected I was by that. Mm -hmm. You know, look how affected I was. Um, you know, movies are there for entertainment. You don't know how much they're affecting you. You've got to really pay attention and notice it. How are you feeling before? How are you feeling now? After you watch something, really tune in and notice that because I think we've des desensitized ourselves and we've lost the um, ability to see how something is affecting us because we're not taking a moment reflecting on it. How are we feeling, right? So you know, that's helpful. That'll be a great way to um, navigate your way through the things that you let in. It'll also be a great way to wake up and realize I do need to protect my space. The first thing that I do in the morning, which is very malleable period, is in the morning, you're very sensitive. You're coming out of a sleepy state and everything and you're, you're waking up, right? So it's a malleable state. It's like soft clay, you're molding it. So it's important to protect that space. So I do the AOM system in the morning and therefore nothing can throw me off for the day. Nothing can, it, you know, it could be undesirable information or news that comes my way and I'm going to be able to handle it in such a powerful way that's going to make a huge difference. That's going to transform the situation into a win-win situation for everybody because I set myself up like that, right? So that's very important too. Don't, I don't look at emails and text messages and things like that, protect the space, really yes. important. Especially in the morning. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. How can we find you on the internet? <laughs> Tell us of your course, page. You don't find me at Get Your Life Now. Dot com get your life now dot com yeah and i'm also on facebook as well it's under sterling meyer put my name there get your life now you're gonna find so many things it's gonna be great yes and uh my book is available on amazon worldwide and barnes and noble as well which i'm not i'm gonna do you have barnes and noble i don't know but it's online there well. it's online i have it and i'm in europe so everybody can have it here <laughs> thank you yeah. so much and this is really inspiring i hope that we brought inspiration to the world to start really working on ourselves with meditation with the being with the art of manifestation and yeah take it from there in little baby steps we can heal and um yeah i wish you all a very 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 good day night wherever you are sterling we can have a chat i'm just going to stop the recording say bye bye thank you so much diana thank you for having me thanks for joining <laughs> so